will be talking to us this morning from Matthew 2. His, he's got a question for you again this morning. Is Christmas really too costly? That's the question. Is Christmas really too costly? In Isaiah, Isaiah 9, he tells us in verse 6-7, For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, the government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. Amen. Let's pray together, please. Heavenly Father, as we uh, approach this Christmas season where we look at your birth, it may not be exactly on that day that, uh, that we celebrate, but we remember your, that you were brought into earth as a baby, and that, that was a great time for us because you made a way of salvation through your blood shed on the cross. Lord, we can't thank you, we can't praise you enough. Lord, for all that's done and said here, we ask that you would have the honor and glory. Be with the pastor this morning, give him the words to say. Amen. Amen. Our first hymn is number 168. 168. It came upon a midnight winter. 168.
that's kind of cool. So, 192.
Doris, our pastor, can tell you more about that and can give you a, there's some excerpts going around of what's going on there. But Pray for America has decided to join them for that revival service. So Wednesday, prayer service will be right here at 6 p.m. Looking ahead on Wednesday the 20th, I don't know how many of you like Christmas caroling. I know the weather is a factor sometimes, but we're going to do it a little different again this year. We're going to go over to the uh, to the Durand, what is it, compilation home there, and when they when they got three or four wings there that we walk up and down, sing a couple songs in each corridor. Doesn't take very long, and we light up lives when we're over there. People, the, some of them people smile that haven't smiled for for their whole rest of the year. So when they come and tell us how much they appreciate us coming there, so bring a little uh, light to some seniors there if you can join us on. It's a week from Wednesday. We'll be going over there. No breakfast in, in, in December again due to schedule conflicts and busy times. Sunday, December 24th, we'll have our morning service and then our 6 p.m. service will be a candlelight service. It'll be, a, it'll be candlelight and it'll be all about Christmas. So come and invite friends and family that don't go to church that, that evening. A lot of churches don't have it service so we will and we'll enjoy ourselves there so invite your friends uh let's see sunday p.m and the seventh following the service will be the soup and sandwich so put that on your calendar tuesday the ninth pray for america will be that's in january we'll be over at the reformed church over here that one's on lord street yes i can do it get one right <laughs> and then saturday the 13th will be our next music jam and we had a great time last night. It was a very special time. Rusty, go ahead and tell about it. Yeah, we. I wanted to let you know. That, uh, first of all, I want to thank everybody for the church that came and supported it. <coughs> but anybody that was there has to know it's kind of a special jam for some reason. I don't know. It seemed like everybody was on key. The Lord was moving there. We had new people that hasn't been in church years playing music up there and uh, talked to Dave's wife and he says, I'm hoping it's a breakthrough for Jerry, the new guy, and because he, had, he, he turned his back on the church. She said, not on God, but she says he's still getting off. He's not living like he should be. So we're hoping this is radiating on behind him, just a good time to get together and play music. And uh, I don't know why, but it seemed like I mean, I don't know if I've heard Dana Dorse and the pastor and anybody sing any better than they did last night. It seemed like the Lord was in it. And uh, I hope, if, if you like any kind of music that and a blessing, you need to come support it. I'll tell you why. If I there was he late last night. And I had my grandson up there giving, yeah. uh, singing, he hadn't sang in years, so. The presence of the Lord was certainly there last night. It's, so it's a it's a good time. So if you if you like music at all, the jams are really a special time. So and ushers, the munchies are good too. Oh yeah, <laughs> munchies are right. ushers come on forward, please. <laughs> this time we'll look at to the Lord for tithes and offerings. Brother Ron. Father, we come before you with thanks for this church and the end time events and prophecies that we've studied in Sunday school this past year. And as I read the headlines, your prophecies literally come off the pages of the Bible. Uh, Father, I pray that the Christians will be emboldened, knowing that our time is short, emboldened to witness and use every resource, resource to our advantages of your kingdom. Bless us today as we take this offering. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.
Negative. 242. Clarksville, where one of my, my great grandson and his 
mother and his grandma lived there. And so I texted her right away and asked them if they were okay. She said they were okay. She said the tornado went close to uh, Molly and Kai, which is my uh, granddaughter and then and my great grandson. And she said that they were okay. And she said, thank you for checking on us. Mm -hmm. Several several close acquaintances here. Yeah. Um, the Lord, the, the, the Lord uh, spared them. And so we just thank the Lord for His uh, protection and His grace. It says in Psalm 91, it, it talks about He will give His angels charge concerning you to guard you in all your ways. So we just thank the Lord this morning for the protection He offers. Anyone else? I don't want to. Yes? My sister just gave birth to her baby boy, her first, yesterday. Oh, sister, oh, let's, so, so, that's congratulations, and we pray for mom and baby that yep, they're both. she's still in the hospital, and they don't know why. Okay. So she went all the way through her whole pregnancy, and then her water broke, and then, like, no dilation ever happened, so they had to, like, her give her medication to dilate, and then it took 24 hours after it all. So she, she just wants to come home. <laughs> yeah, she wants to come home. But, but let's and, get, and her name is? Amanda. Amanda. Let's pray for Amanda that she's uh, uh, getting back to normal soon. She'll never be normal. Yet. No, she'll never be normal. She'll never have any time for herself. Never. <laughs> she thought so, it was an easy, natural birth. I'm like, yeah. no, it's not. And, and let's remember Amy. She, her time's coming up here for a second, so uh, let's remember her and, and Remy and Ethan and the whole family there. So, anyone else? We got praise for Elvin, too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Elvin went through some tests this week, did the procedures. Did good. Did good. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Elvin, we've been praying for you for quite some time, so we hope that you found the help you need. Sure helps. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, in your hymnals, turn to, to number 165. 165, Emmanuel, God with us. Emmanuel, 165.
uh, just exactly what what we needed to hear and to feel and your presence that we felt last night in our music time together. Lord, we pray that much work would be done towards bringing people closer to the Lord and maybe someone for the first time as well, too. So we pray for those guys that were here last night, a couple of them that we haven't seen in a long time. Jerry and Dave, we pray for them. And Lord, uh, others that were there last night as well. And then Eldon, uh, Lord, we pray that things would turn out well there with uh, the testing that was done, and it did. And thank you, Lord, and give you praise for that, and for, for answers to prayer, too, for uh, jobs for Rhonda. And then, Lord, this morning as we watch the news from overnight, Lord, we're praying for those that are in the storm places where uh, turmoil is going on and also over in Israel and Gaza and those places of war. Lord, there are many people that are under the gun, Lord. We just pray uh, that you would watch over them. We're thankful and also raise a praise for you for protection of those around in our country with this storm. Lord, we think of uh, some of our families, Lord, that uh, are, are still recovering. And we pray for Dick and for their family and Audrey's family, Lord, for healing. And uh, others that are on our prayer list this morning that are, are in the process of healing. And so we pray for continued healing for such as Rusty and Debbie and uh, for healing after operation. And Lord, we just pray for all those needs this morning. And then uh, as Amy has shared with us today, uh, her sister uh, Amanda, Lord, we are praying for her to be able to come home from the hospital and everything be well with that baby there. We pray for Deb as she's traveling. And during this Christmas season, Lord, there are many of us that do travel to others, uh, family parts of, uh, and homes and, and uh, across the country, maybe to Florida. So we're looking ahead a few ne uh, next few weeks, Lord, that you would watch over our people as they travel. Lord, and there are many uh, people on our list this morning for various things. So we ask for healing. We're thankful for good reports from the Pettit family there and Katie. And Lord, we just continue to pray for her in the days ahead. And then, uh, Lord, we pray for our church and our Sunday school as we continue to grow together. And uh, Lord, we we pray for the other churches in town as we've promised to do. And uh, Lord, our service tonight as we move over there uh, after our service, Lord, and sing some uh, carols and Lord, different things that we've got on our program in the days ahead here in the next couple of weeks in our holiday season. What a special season that you've given us. We give you praise and thanks for all the wonderful things that we can observe during these times. We ask all these things this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, you've noticed our, probably noticed our, our Advent candles down here. I'm going to have Dan come up and light the second candle from the left there, and that signifies peace for today. It depends on what you read. You can get uh, different sayings that go along with those candles. Uh, but uh, expectation and hope on that first candle that we lit last week, and then that pink one's a different color. So we're going to look forward to that one. <coughs> All right. Thank you, Dan. Well, for our message today, is Christmas too costly? <laughs> Depends on how you look at that, doesn't it? I, I think that we hear every year someone will comment, well, I'm not, I'm not going to decorate, I'm not going to do anything, I'm not going to buy any gifts. It's just, we're getting way overboard and we just tend to spend too much money on it and it's not really what it's all about, especially for the Christian believer. But, you know, uh, you remember that the people that came to see Jesus brought gifts, and that signifies uh, some of the things that, that we give, and it's good to share gifts and, and, and get together and have dinner and various things that we do during this Christmas season. But the, the question is for us, is Christmas too costly? And I want to read from Matthew chapter 2, verse 13. Really, in the New Testament, it's the first book of the New Testament, and the second verse or second chapter there. It says, "And when they were departed, 
Behold, the angel of the Lord appeareth to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. And if you remember the story how it goes and all the other male babies at the same time, because King Herod was uh, kind of afraid that sooner or later uh, the, that small baby, as if it reported the king, would grow up and beat him out of his kingdom there. So that's why that was. One of the standard complaints heard at Christmas time is that the holiday is getting too complicated, too costly. And I know that it is complicated. It's a, we've called it commercialized, uh, turned it right into a, a frenzy. When, when you have Christmas shopping going on where the people are lined up outside the stores to get, what do we got? We've got Black Friday and um, there's something to do with Monday. Cyber. We got all kinds of things. I've kind of lost track of them. Now, how many of you like that kind of stuff? <laughs> Darcy went like that. <laughs> get in here. Uh, okay, I, I remember one of the last times that I went shopping just before Christmas, and I thought, I, I, can't, I can't move, you know. I've got to get through here, and I'm going to go over here to see if I can find it. Nope, has gone, and I can't get to it. Somebody got it first, must be that person in the tent. Outside the door there. And you, you begin to wonder, why is it getting so complicated? Is it really, is it really necessary? Now, I, I can remember my grandma back. She had 23 grandchildren, okay? And so she would begin shopping right after Christmas for the next year. Anywhere she was at, probably look around for a trinket to give some one of the kids. But that takes a lot of time, a lot of thought, and actually a lot of expense. The answer to this question, is it too costly, depends on each individual viewpoint, I suppose. And what about the first Christmas? Was it costly? Do you realize some of these things in this next paragraph here? It cost Mary and Joseph the comforts of home during a journey to Bethlehem. And uh, we talked about, Dan talked about angels today, uh, the journey to Bethlehem, and an angel directed exile to Egypt to protect the Christ child from the wrath of Herod. It cost mothers and fathers in and around Bethlehem the massacre of their babies by the wicked Herod. It cost the shepherds the neglect of, of shepherds' life for a journey to Bethlehem. They had to stop their work there with the sheep, and I suppose they had to get somebody else to, to come in and, and watch the sheep or their herds. They can't just walk away from them. They had to take a trip, uh, a journey over to Bethlehem to see this thing that the Lord had made known to them. And the Bible says, And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe, lying in a manger. That's Luke chapter 2, verse 16. It cost the wise men a long journey, expensive gifts of gold. What did they bring? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. It also cost them changed lives because when they had come and seen the real thing like that, their lives were changed. And a journey home by another way, it has cost missionaries untold suffering and church people, persecution, sometimes martyrdom, uh, telling the gospel story over the years since that time. What did the Christmas cost God the Father? It cost him more than all. Yes, amen. Everything else put together. It has cost uh, that the Father, his only begotten Son, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.16. You know, you still see today, thank the Lord, even if you go to a baseball game or a football game or something, if you look in the background, a lot of times you'll see that scripture. Somebody's holding that up. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that they, they still get to do that occasionally and we get to read it. 
But it, it, the important part about that, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believeth in him. Now that tells me that some churches and some preaching is a little bit misguided if they say, well, you've got to be chosen or you've got to be a certain person. This says everybody. That's right. Right. Whosoever That's right. can come to the Lord. Is Christmas costly? After reading all that, I think it did, yes. I think it does. What did Christmas cost Jesus himself? It cost him a life of sacrifice and service, a cruel death that is unmatched in history. If you ever got a chance to go and watch that movie that was made just a few years back and see the reality of the torture that was done there, I think that you would agree that there hasn't been any other quite like that. Yeah. It's another question, and I want to discuss it with you. Is Christmas costly? First of all, I know that Christmas is too costly if it does not mean hope. You see, Christmas gives us hope, doesn't it? The prophecies of the Old Testament had pointed to the coming of the Messiah, the great deliverer. The prophets in those days said that something, somebody was coming. And that, that we needed to wait and see what that was. The world had been looking and longing for his coming for more than 4,000 years. The waiting time had been long. The world was weary. It was to a world almost without hope that the angels had brought their message of hope. People since that day have not been without hope. Those who know the Christ of Christmas will never be without hope. Amen. Hopeless are all those who have not heard or acknowledged about Christ. Some have heard and did nothing with it. That's the tragedy. Christmas is too costly. Secondly, if we do not receive God's gift. If we do not experience God's love. Now I know you all like to go to one of your Maybe it's your mother or your dad's place or your, or maybe you get together with a, somebody in the family that has a large house and you go over there or maybe you go to somebody with a little small house and squeeze in there uh, for at least one time. Uh, a lot of us have different ways of doing our Christmas get-togethers. We go there to do that and uh, to receive an experience some of God's love when we get together for Christmas with our families. The greatest word of all for Christmas is for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. All of us. Don't feel left out. You shouldn't be. Uh, <laughs> Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be. Now this long word, propitiation, took me years to get that figured out what it was, what it was all about. But he took our place yes, amen. and died for our sins. 1 John 4.10 is really what that means. No one understands the first Christmas until... He or she experiences the love of God in Christ. Let our hearts be filled with love, the genuine love of God in Christ, and let us manifest that love to others. What does the word manifest mean? Let us show that love to others. Let's figure out a way to be able to show or witness to them, give it to them as well, others, and show them that love. Christmas, for the third thing, is too costly if we do not experience the forgiveness of sins. Another important part of the, of the second part right there, if we do not receive his gift, or if we turn it down, and then if we don't receive the gift and do something with it, and acknowledge it, and take him into our heart, it's too costly if we do not experience the forgiveness of sins. An angel said to Joseph, And thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Matthew 1, 21. You know, the only way to the, 
to the Father is through the Son. It doesn't say, the Bible doesn't say, there's several ways you can do it. You can go over to the Michigan Department of Public Works and you can go in there and sign up for something. It doesn't do it that way. That's the, it, only through Jesus Christ can we find the way to the Lord. To the shepherds and the angels said, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Luke 2, verse 11. Paul spoke of the costly purpose of Jesus coming in whom we have redemption through his blood for forgiveness of sins according to the riches and grace, Ephesians 1, 7. Not according to anything that we did, we just accepted his gift. His grace is the one that forgave us of our sins. There was a fellow named Malcolm Fuller and he tells a story of a man who sat down after Christmas actually to review the damage, he said. He wrote to a friend, the toys that we bought are already broken. The tree has, well, the batteries are dead, of course. Yep. Uh -huh. yeah. The tree has lost its freshness and has been thrown out. We have overeaten we wouldn't do that, would we? No. That was Thanksgiving. <laughs> and we didn't learn anything, apparently, because we came back and did it again at Christmas. We overspent. Maybe our credit cards are snipped up. Uh, overlooked. We would truly overlook the true meaning of Christmas if we forgot that Jesus' purpose for coming into the world was to seek and save the lost. That was the whole purpose. Do we even think about that? Luke 19, 10. We need to get our focus in the right place Amen. when it comes to Christmas. I know I look out here and I know that it's fun uh, to put up lights and decorate your house and everything. And, and we used to, there used to be some really nice lights out there and there still is. They got, they got oh, what do you got now? The projector lights that you can yeah. do up the side of the house and make it from one place, a program in there, and we'll do the whole house. Pretty pretty neat stuff. But the old way of doing it, climbing around. Wayne, did you used to clip them onto your gutters? Or anywhere that you could clip them on the edge of the shingles? They, yes. Yeah, they used to have a lot of uh, stuff on their house. It's fun to do all that stuff and decorate for any season, really. But is that really the purpose of it? No, it's just part of the celebration. The fourth thing, Christmas is too costly if we do not radiate joy. This is a big one, I feel like. If, if we need to radiate joy. If we're the grump that sits around and it's all negative at Christmas, what are we thinking? Because this is the greatest, you know, we have, what, two or three holidays. We've got Thanksgiving, man. We're giving the Lord thanks. we got Christmas where we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. And then we've got Easter. That's a, All three of those are big Big celebrations for our Lord and Savior. Christmas is too costly if we do not radiate joy of some kind. The angel of the Lord said to the shepherds, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Luke 2, 10. Amen. Joy filled the hearts of people who heard the good news from the hillside. Joy filled the hearts of Simeon and Anna in the temple as they realized the significance of the child for the world. Joy filled the hearts of wise men when they saw his star, when they presented uh, their gifts and as they returned to their homes after worshiping Christ. Joy is a Christmas word. I think that most of the cards that we get somewhere in there says joy. Mm -hmm. Now as you know, Cards have changed in our world. Sometimes it says Christmas, but you got to look for those. Now they say Xmas. The world's trying to do away with the real meaning of it. Then why have Christmas? You want to have a gift time together? Do that. But the real thing is Christmas. Yes, it is. Yeah. Christmas. Yes. Christmas. Christmas is a Christmas word. Let joy fill your heart during this Christmas season, and I hope that it spills over into your heart and that you have that joy. 
The fifth thing tonight or today is Christmas is too costly if we do not manifest peace and goodwill among people. The angel of the Lord said, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Luke 2.14. There's no room for bitterness at Christmas. Christmas is the time for peace and goodwill. We, if we have been recipients of God's goodwill, which I think we all have, That's right. then we will have goodwill toward God and others. Let's don't keep it in. Let's spread it around. Christmas means giving up unreasonable and stubborn attitudes. Christmas is the tune, or it's the time to re-examine our attitude in the light of Christmas, the Christmas star. To have the true spirit of Christmas, we must have peace with all people. We've got to give up those disagreements and those grudges that we have with other people. God doesn't want us to have those any time of the season as Christians. The sixth thing, Christmas is too costly if we do not proclaim the good news. Should we be telling people what really Christmas is about? Sure, sure. Anytime we get an opportunity, anytime that we can write out a card, send it out with something about your comments about your Lord and Savior. What is good news for Christmas? For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Luke 2.11 the greatest privilege that can come to any of us is to share our knowledge of the Lord with those who do not know Him. This can be done through our witnessing, our efforts, our soul winning, and our missionary program. We can link our lives to God's eternal purpose by proclaiming the good news. Make this Christmas meaningful by sharing the good news. What's Christmas all about? Christmas is too costly if we do not exercise our faith. Faith is a word for Christmas. God's faith is in man is revealed by the gift of his son Jesus. Can anyone ever doubt that God cares for sinful people? God has provided the object of humankind's faith. I think that we know that God has tried and is trying and that sending his son for us to forgive us of our sins, what more could he do? And here's God and the faith that he has in us. We don't deserve that, do we? God's wonderful provision demands a response. If someone is standing there, picture, have you ever done this? Have you tried to give somebody a gift and you handed it out to them and I don't want to. How does that make you feel? <clears throat> when God is standing there in heaven and he's trying to give you his son in forgiveness of your sins, accept it. That's the best thing you can do for a blessing for him as well is to receive his gift. Take it. Remove your doubts and questions by responding with faith in the Lord Jesus. Christmas isn't too costly if we respond to our Lord. It is if we don't. But if we respond to our Lord, God loves us tremendously and He wants to come and dwell with us in our hearts. Amen. He can do this through the, Christ, the, the Christ of Christmas. That's how He does it. So today the question is, do we know Jesus Christ? Have we accepted the gift? Otherwise, in a lot of ways that we haven't discussed this morning, it's going to be very costly to us if we turn him down and something happens and the Lord returns and we miss that trip with him when he comes down to snatch us up in the clouds. Then, for sure, it is too costly. So today... As we close our service, I want to invite you to come and pray.
if you'd like to come and kneel down and pray this morning and receive Jesus Christ in your heart or just maybe tell him that you want more or maybe you want to rededicate to him, that would be a great Christmas gift to receive that today. Let's stand together. Our Heavenly Father, we this is this is a, an old-time church, Lord, that's had an altar up here in front for a long time. And as I stand here this morning, I can think back of in the days when it was more popular to come and be take a time out to pray at the end of a service and kneel at an altar. We're just kneeling because we're being a little bit humble. And we're kneeling down on our knees before him and asking him into our hearts. And Lord, we can do that for free this morning and ask him into our hearts. We can also come and pray for others that we love and would like you to speak to them about it. We can come to the altar and pray for that. We, there's so many things that we can come and pray for uh, this morning and receive uh, a whole filling of the Holy Spirit from you. We can, we can dedicate and be consecrated fully to Him and come and pray too. And come and pray with others at the altar. But it's important that we make that kind of dedication to Him. Amen. It kind of shows that we really mean what we say. And we want the Lord into our hearts. So today, if there's if there's anyone who would like to do that, many of us have, have done that in the past. Maybe we need to make a new dedication to Him and say, Lord, I want I want all of you today. No one's gonna think it's funny and laugh. We just pray this morning that you would consider coming here to this altar and praying, kneeling down before God and praying. We all know that it's not going to be too long before the Lord comes. Everything is lined up, and we don't want to miss that. Lord, as we pray in closing this morning, we pray that uh, all hearts would be clear between us and you and that there wouldn't be anything that would come between us. We could always remember that back on this Christmas, 1923, or 2023, Lord, that that's when we gave our hearts to the Lord for good. We received you, and our lives changed. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Today is the day of salvation. We thank you for this time together. Thank you for speaking to our hearts today. Thank you for nudging us. Lord, we just ask that you watch over us the rest of this day as we rest. And that we'll have a great time tonight as we worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you guys for coming.